Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So today things are looking much better, much, much better. Bitcoin is coming up. All coins are rallying. So I thought today will be a good time to to share how I would build a crypto portfolio in 2021. Obviously, my portfolio is a little bit different. I've been holding on a lot of bags for a long time, but there are a lot of new people that's in the space that's always asking me, hey, how should I build my portfolio? What coin should I populate my portfolio? This and that. So I thought it'd be a good time to build out one from scratch and talk about some of the favorite altcoins and of course Bitcoin and how you should build it out. So thanks for tuning in. As always, smash the like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Two streams every day, 11.30 a.m. and 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. There's exclusive content on all three. Well, except Facebook, but still, you should follow me there. All right, thanks for tuning in. Uh, those of you guys in the chat, welcome, welcome, welcome as always. And let me change my screen. Okay, so Bitcoin is above 53,000 again. Woohoo! It's much better than where it was yesterday hovering around 50,000 and then of course we had a little scare where Bitcoin went down and every single person out there that was driving FUD saying that they're going uh they're going to take out a large short because Bitcoin's going to go down to 42 or 43 or 45 or whatever. Well, you know what? The bulls said no. No, we're not going to listen to that nonsense. We're going to drive things up primarily from Asia when Asia woke up. They just started buying and buying and buying and buying and this relates to a lot of things. This is the start of Futures Expiration Week. So I've said not every expiration week ends in red. The last three months, we did have some volatility. We did end up in red. But if you go back beyond, you know, before 2021, there's many, 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 many periods uh, throughout 2020, 2019, 2018, where future expirations came and actually Bitcoin rallied. So we're off to a good start. That that's looking like what's happening right now, but it's still early. And obviously, Bitcoin being at 53 is not back up at 64, so we still have plenty of room to grow, but this is definitely a, a bullish sign. And I'm really glad to see all the, the short leverage traders get wrecked for once. There's just too many people that's feeling too comfortable, especially ones that have a large audience and they keep telling them go follow me but they don't tell you when they exit or if they exited or if they get wrecked and they get all of their audience to get wrecked too i i just can't stand that so uh hopefully you guys been listening um to the message basically dollar cost average hold and buy the dips and that's pretty much it right well and have a diversified portfolio but things are looking definitely uh, pretty good for bitcoin also if you go to all coins you know, right around the two trillion mark, not there yet, but overall 5.5% increase. That's not shabby. That's not shabby. And if you go down the list, for the most part, most, most are in green. Some are in double digit greens. So that's obviously pretty nice, pretty nice to see. So, um, so I'm going to go over the news a little bit and then I'm going to go and show you guys, talk about this main topic, how to build a portfolio in 2021. Obviously, in 2021, there's a lot of new new projects that didn't exist before, right? But the strategy and overall build is pretty much the same, but it's just that, you know, the projects are different. Okay, um, so let's get to the news first. Number one, Jamie Dimon, Mr. Uh, Bitcoin Bear, <laughs> now is following... The other banks, JP Morgan, will now allow their their wealthy clients, we're talking about ones with millions of assets, to invest in Bitcoin funds for the first time. This is following the footsteps of Wells Fargo and uh, um, Morgan Stanley. Wait, is it is it Morgan Stanley? I forgot. No, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and now JP Morgan, right? Of course, Jamie Dimon uh, had a had a rough history with Bitcoin. Going back to 2017, 18, kept causing Bitcoin a Ponzi. Then it turned out JP Morgan started to offer crypto services. And then now he has to just backtrack. Obviously, he came out JP Morgan coin and now he's backtracking. Now his firm is actually recommending to the to the very wealthy that they should be investing in Bitcoin. That's a complete 180. Complete 180. I would not be surprised to hear Jamie Dimon say that he has bought Bitcoin 
soon. We'll we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> that's probably around. That's probably around the corner. Back in 2017, it was popular to say that Bitcoin was a Ponzi. In 2021, that's no not so popular. To say now it's more popular. To say I bought Bitcoin. Right. So that's obviously pretty good for the industry. Another good thing is PayPal. PayPal CEO says that their crypto offering exceeded all all expectations. It's blowing up right now. Literally everyone with a PayPal app right now is signing on and buying crypto. And merchants also can now accept crypto for payments. So that's fantastic. I mean, you know, Dan Shulman is very, very, very bullish um, on just new payment, new payment uh, infrastructure and just crypto in general, how it can transform the industry. So listen to this quote 10 years from now. You will see a tremendous decline in the use of cash. All forms of payment will collapse into the mobile phone. Yes, that that already happened in Asia. I mean, people in Asia literally do not carry anything other than mobile phone to pay for things. Credit cards as a form factor will go away and you will use your phone uh, because a phone can add much more value than just tapping your credit card. And that is why Visa, MasterCard are both getting involved with crypto, both (laughs) um, partnering up with crypto projects to not only settle their transactions, but also help people buy and sell crypto because they know this is the future. They don't want to become dinosaurs, right? So obviously this is very bullish. This is more on the retail side, not an institutional side. But of course, you know, it's it's both, right? Money is flowing in from everywhere. Maybe not all at once. Maybe sometimes it's hard to recognize when things are going down. But trust me, this is what's happening behind the scenes. I've been showing you guys a lot of data, a lot of statistics about mass buying behind the scenes and people don't quite under believe it you know believe it or understand it well trust me they're doing it but you know sometimes they don't want to cause price to go up sometimes they want to cause price to go down because it's in their best interest to cause prices to go down because then they can buy more bitcoin so you got to think about that right you got to think about what some of these guys are i'm um, talking about institutions what they're doing behind the scenes because they really just want to buy as much as they can and retail also. Um, okay, what else is there? Today is probably a low, not that much news. But here's another one. Binance, of course, they have launched Tesla. They tokenized Tesla stock and made it into a, a coin. Um, they have done it with Coinbase shares. And now they're adding three more. Of course, you would want to add MicroStrategy. Now they're adding Apple and Microsoft. Interesting, interesting. There's a lot of projects out there that allow synthetic creations of stocks, right? But after you create it, so what? Where is it gonna be traded? Binance is like, screw that. We're just gonna come out with their own and put it on our platform so people could trade it immediately. And it's just really, really genius. Another another thing that I'm, I'm sure other exchanges will copy soon because Binance seems to be the innovator in these kind of things, right? So, um, and this also, I think, does help overall with, oops, I just skipped. I just closed it accidentally. Uh, <laughs> I closed it accidentally, but I was gonna say overall it helps those stocks too because think about people that are fomoing in. Oh, it's right here um, into these tokenized stocks, right? And they fomo in. Guess what? Binance has to actually buy these stocks so that you know what um, it actually helps those stocks overall. So that's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, here's another one. Polygon jumps ahead. As the race for layer two adoption picks up, a lot of you guys, uh, a lot of you guys do uh, do support Polygon or AKA Matic, right? Um, they have their layer two. They're pulling up a lot of a lot of DeFi projects. I mean, everyone is like literally moving to everyone from Ethereum is moving to a layer two. They either have moved to a layer two or they moved to you know some other chain, right? Or they're cross chain. They didn't completely move off, but Polygon got a ton, a ton of projects to move over. So obviously it's helping Polygon. And I think today they're actually going, they're going up too. So not bad, not bad. Okay, just a few others. Uh, I came across this article and this talks about Roth IRA and taxes. Of course, this relates to my sponsor, I Trust Capital. So, you know, taxes suck, right? Recently, there's been a lot of talk about capital gains, you know, capital gains going up to 44%, something insane. And that caused a lot of FUD, right? But here's the thing. I'm not, I'm not a retirement guy. I've never paid attention to 
IRA, 401k, Roth IRA, right? And some of you guys may say that that's reckless, but you know, I've always, I've always thought investing was better. But um, you know, according to this, individuals making less than 125,000 a year or married couples who file jointly earn less than 198,000 can contribute up to 6,000 per year with a Roth IRA. And, and you can actually take this out without being taxed. So that's pretty interesting. That's pretty interesting. And those of you guys, why does this relate to crypto? Because I, I trust capital allows you to open up IRA account and transfer your IRA and 401k into it and buy crypto with it. So if you're going to be buying Bitcoin anyways, and you're going to be holding it for long term, why not do it with a Roth IRA and not be taxed for it? That would be pretty amazing. Or you buy it with an IRA and uh, and paid taxes when you retire. So it's up to you. So very, very interesting. Um, that's I Trust Capital. So their link is in the, my description. All right. Also, with this, Morpheus Network. Morpheus Network, they have won a global, a global competition with Golf Tainer. And I didn't even know this existed. Who is Golf Tainer? Golf Tainer is a gigantic, look at this. They, they are a gigantic port, a privately owned port. I believe they are the biggest port out there on earth. They were running competition, you know, challenging projects specifically specifically uh blockchain projects you know they want to work with blockchain projects they want to see which ones are the most promising and morpheus network has won they won the the one of their main uh main awards and according to morpheus network they're in conjunction they're talking with golf tainer um in terms of working together of course morpheus network they have a SaaS platform they're also in supply chain so their blockchain could definitely track all the cargo that's going in and out of the ports and going to different countries. So that's pretty that's pretty cool. What else is there? KuCoin, of course. I love KuCoin, support them. They have they have added Ampleforth. So some of you guys know that Ampleforth got added on Coinbase last week. All of a sudden, now KuCoin, of course, adds Ampleforth and their new fourth governance token. So that's also there. And uh, lastly, I just want to mention about Benchmark Protocol. This was just released not too long ago. They have whitelisted Link with their new marketplace launchpad. Benchmark Protocol, of course, um, they're involved with having uh, algorithm. Uh, so they compete with Ampleforth. They're algorithmic uh, stablecoin that's pegged to the SDR, and they're preparing for something big, a huge marketplace launch. Marketplace launch, and they're whitelisting projects left and right like Link. Dodo, Harmony, and many, many others. It's gonna be a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace with lending and so forth. So that is pretty big. That's what Benchmark is preparing and they're, they're getting ready for that and they're whitelisting all these different projects. All right, so that is it. Now let's get to what you guys have been waiting for and that is how do I build a crypto portfolio in 2021? All right, so this, let me uh, let me bring this up and I'm going to present this. Hopefully this comes out OK. Let me see. OK, I think I think that looks OK. It might be cut off a little bit. Um, OK, so this is a little bit different for those of you guys that's that's new to the space. Obviously, um, you have heard a lot of these projects before. Some of you guys have no clue, though. Right. Some of you guys are new to the space. You just heard of like Bitcoin, Ethereum and so forth, right? Um, so this will be a little bit encompassing, but I'll trust me, I'll go over everything. And for those of you guys that's coming back from 2017, 2018, a lot of these projects, some are the same, but a lot of these are also new. So if I was building a brand new portfolio, knowing what I know, these would be the steps and rules and projects I would look at. Okay, it doesn't mean that this is the end all be all list like this has to be the, the portfolio you follow, no. And uh, you should actually do your own homework based on all these projects I talk about, right? Uh, but these are the ones I've been following and I think they have great potential and I would add them to my portfolio, right? So that's, that's the basis of this. All right, let's move on. So to quote myself, okay? These four quotes are very, very, very important. Very important. Number one, 
don't chase the gains let the gains come to you right i know you guys could relate to this a lot of you guys see a project pump up especially the small caps micro caps mid caps they pump up and you're wondering if it's you know if you should fomo in if they have something huge you know coming up you know most of the time they don't sometimes they just pump up sometimes it's their turn as they're trying to just rallies up right the best thing is not to chase those gains. What I mean is don't FOMO in, fear of missing out. What you want to do is find good promising projects and get into them early or get into them when they're down or get into them while they're just stagnant. And that way, right, when the gains come and rotate to you, you'll be, uh, you'll be, you'll be happy for that. And you're not chasing something that's on the way up. You're getting in at the ground floor and you're riding it up. So that's number one. Number two, follow the 50, 20, 25, 25 rule and dollar cost average and hold them. 25, 25, 50, 25, 25, I'll get to in a little bit, but DCA means dollar cost averaging, which means that you're buying over a long haul and hold or hodl means exactly that. You just hold. <laughs> Never panic sell. That's very important. And lastly, be greedy when others are fearful. I, I stole that from Warren Buffett, but... You know what? I think that's a good one. So when others are greedy, right? That's when you want to be fearful. But then if others are fearful, that's when you want to be greedy. Just like yesterday. There's a lot of FUD yesterday. A lot of fear. That's actually when you should actually pick up. That's actually the best time to pick up. Because everyone else is panic selling. But no, you're doing the reverse and you're buying. And you're not chasing the gains. And today, the gains came to you, right? Perfect example. Perfect example. So these four rules, very, very important. All right, next up, what else is there? Okay, let's start with the 50, 25, 25 rule. 50% in Bitcoin. I think this is pretty obvious, okay? Bitcoin, you cannot ignore Bitcoin. Too many people come into this space is like, Bitcoin is too high. I'm not going to concentrate on it. I'm only going to go into small caps because they're going to pump up to the moon and that's it. And that's how you get wrecked. And that's how you, you, you really set yourself up for failure and you're not setting yourself for success for the long haul and for life-changing wealth. That's what you want to set yourself up for. So you have to have Bitcoin in your portfolio. And I recommend 50%. And why is that? Bitcoin is king. It's definitely the king. It's getting all the recognition, everything. I've, I've been talking about the news, right? With the banks, the institutions, the retail adoption, everything, all the buying is concentrating on Bitcoin. It has that name recognition, has the first mover's advantage. And it's the greatest store of value ever created by mankind. So those three things make it the king. It is the king. And no one will ever take that crown away from Bitcoin. It also carries the market. When Bitcoin roars up and pumps up, guess what happens? The whole market comes up. Bitcoin comes down. Also, the whole market comes down, right? Bitcoin is definitely carrying the market. No matter what, it, even if the Bitcoin dominance comes down slightly, still Bitcoin is carrying the market. The market did not decouple away from Bitcoin. That's very, very important to understand. Bitcoin is a safe haven, meaning that it does provide stability, meaning that if the crypto market tanks, right, Bitcoin is the one that most people put their money into. Well, besides stable coins, but most people switch back to Bitcoin because it, it usually has less volatility. It's less risky. It holds better. Right. So it does have a stability and that's why it's a safe haven. And let's not forget, Bitcoin still has tremendous upsides, tremendous, tremendous, tremendous upside. Even at 50,000, 55,000, 60,000. You know what? Bitcoin has tremendous upside to 500,000 million dollars plus. People don't want to hear it just like people didn't want to hear Bitcoin could be at 100,000 at 3000. Well, guess what? We're more than halfway there. Right. I've been saying that when Bitcoin tanked to 3,000, I'm like, stay strong. It will break 20,000 and it will go higher. People didn't want to hear that, but look at where we are now, right? So Bitcoin still has a tremendous upside. That is, that is a certainty. All right. So that is Bitcoin. Now let's go to, let's go to a uh, second part, 25% in big caps and big caps is anything that's over $10 billion in market cap. And these days, there's a lot. There's like 18 options. Well, a couple of stable coins, but you take them out. Um, yeah. So, okay. So these are the ones that I like. I like. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to populate your entire, you know, big caps with every single one. 
but I would definitely concentrate on these. And there's ones that I like more than others, right? Um, but it really depends on what your taste is and what you know which projects you believe in more. Let's start out with Ethereum. Of course, most people have heard of Ethereum. You can't ignore Ethereum. They have the biggest development base out there of any crypto. Um, so they definitely have a ton of teams, projects that's looking to build and innovate. So Ethereum is an innovator. You know, the ERC-20 standard for NFTs came out in Ethereum, ICOs, IEOs. Now, I, you know, IDOs, I mean, anything you can think of, any kind of innovation that's been happening has come out of Ethereum. So they're definitely the innovator because of the development base. Also, you have Ethereum 2.0 to look forward to, which will help them scale. And lastly, you have institutions. Institutions are buying in Ethereum. That is why there's an Ethereum ETF. That's why there's a great scale trust. And you hear about companies now buying Ethereum for their reserve currency too. So that's pretty good, right? So Ethereum, there's a lot to look forward to. Um, Binance Coin. You can't, you can't, you can't dispute how big Binance's ecosystem is. It's just enormous with their global reach, with their their different kind of platforms and what they offer. Enormous Binance Smart Chain also enormous, enormous, growing like wildfire because Ethereum is having some scaling issue. Binance Smart Chain is going nuts, going nuts right now. Um, it's also deflationary. You know, they have coin burst that helps drive the price up. And of course, they're getting into DeFi and NFTs. So they're really killing it. Next up, you have Cardano and Polkadot. And I put them together because they're very, very similar. Both the leaders, Charles and Gavin, are co-founders of Ethereum. They, they both are very, very smart people. And because of that, they have a very large and loyal base. And their ecosystem is growing, especially Polkadot right now. But both of these projects are not done. Polkadot still doesn't have all the parachains connected up yet. And Cardano, of course, is not done. So both are work in progress. However, because of the leadership and because of loyalty, the base and the promise, you know, they're doing very, very well. Right now, next up is Chainlink, the biggest and most robust and most reliable Oracle out there. I don't believe in any other Oracles outside of Chainlink right now. And an Oracle just helps projects grab data from other projects it's just that simple it doesn't even have to be blockchain projects it could be projects outside the blockchain world that's what Chainlink does basically a whole network of grabbers <laughs> data grabbers that's the best way to think about it solana you know i love their new up and coming uh, blockchain i love their ecosystem it's growing like mad in fact, I've been talking a lot about Solana, so I'm not going to talk too much about them. But they have a very fast blockchain, a very uh, big and growing ecosystem. And uh, Alameda Research uh, is investing heavily into them and all the dApps on top of them. So that is why they have been killing it. Also, VeChain. I've been supporting VeChain. This is one of the projects that's, that's carried over from 2017. VeChain is another blockchain that has the, the, by far the most and biggest partnerships out there. Partnerships that are not paper partnership, pay partnerships that are actually companies utilizing the chain. That is very different. And the biggest, biggest, biggest advantage they have is they're in with China. Some of these partners are state run companies that's within China. So they have that in. So when China goes full blown crypto, VeChain will benefit from that greatly, greatly. Uh, next up, you have Theta. Theta, their platform, their decentralized streaming platform is by far the biggest out there. They have a ton of content. They have a ton of traction and they're coming out the new mainnet pretty soon. So Theta is fantastic. And lastly, I put Ripple and Dogecoin together because despite your feelings about Ripple and XRP and Dogecoin, I think at this point it's irresponsible not to hold some seeing how high they are up on CMC, how big they are. They have loyal base and there are use cases for both too. So I think it's irresponsible not to hold either, either one. So that's pretty much it for big caps. That's a lot. You could choose to invest in all these or none of these, right? But I like these projects quite a bit. So you have to do your homework. You have to decide which ones you like the most and which ones you want to put in your big cap. All right, now let's get to mid, small, micro caps. So this list is too extensive. So I just went up to the mid caps 
and not even fully into mid caps. I mean, not fully into the small caps. Uh, there's a lot of micro caps I didn't mention, but that's why you guys need to pay attention to my videos. I've created a lot of videos where I'm searching for micro caps and talking about projects I like. And I mentioned them in Patreon too. So if you guys want some exclu exclusive content, check out my Patreon group. But here's the ones that's mid small for the most part. And it's not just, I have two pages for us. Number one, you have Terra. Terra has a really good base in South Korea. They have an existing app and they came, they came out with stable coins and other apps that utilize them like synthetic token creation, uh, DeFi lending and others. So Terra definitely has a uh, good traction. Pancake swap. They're the largest AMM, not just on Binance Smart Chain. They're the largest AMM of the entire space, even bigger than Uniswap. So I really uh, like pancake swap. And if you don't know what AMM is, basically there are decks with yield farming involved and uh and nfts involved as well cosmos also very promising blockchain they're they're of they're basically an ecosystem of chains and because of ibs um i think it's ibs <laughs> hopefully i didn't get the abbreviation wrong but that basically it's part of their stargate program where it connects up all the chains there's interoperability between the chains and this opens up endless possibilities especially with DeFi and NFT collaboration, cross-chain communication, it's, it's enormous. It's enormous. So um, I think Cosmos has a lot going for it. Polygon, I just had a story about them. You know, they're one of the, 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 um, the most widely used layer two for Ethereum. They have a ton, a ton of DeFi projects that moved over. I believe Compound moved over, SushiSwap moved over, and a whole lot of others moved over. And that's because they're really fast, really cheap, and they have their own decks. They have a whole lot of things going on with Polygon. Then you have Chili's, which is, um, which is an NFT play. They create tokens for football clubs, but they have their own decks, and they're you know really. Um, they're really entwined with even uh, Binance too. So even some of these, these uh, custom tokens for their clubs are trade on Binance, but you could trade on their decks too. But I believe they have a lot of traction. They're, they're still expanding, especially to the US. So they can get into American football and other groups. Um, next you have Engine, which is a huge, gigantic NFT marketplace. They also have a universal wallet. They're tied up with a lot of other uh, companies such as Samsung and they're coming out their layer two and their blockchain. Yeah, they're good. So, same thing with Decentraland. They're just one gigantic virtual world. The leaders of that. There's a lot of virtual worlds now, virtual games that's involved with NFTs, but Decentraland was the very first and they definitely have the network effect. All right. Now, lastly, let's go to page two, All right? Let's start with the graph. The graph is almost like, it's almost like chain link in a way. But they help, they utilize, they utilize um, the same source code basically to help blockchain projects come out with APIs so that other projects can fetch data from them. So this is very important for, for DeFi projects, but that source code is universal. I believe Facebook also utilizes the same code, but that's what Graph does. So it's very necessary in this space. Next you have Harmony. Harmony is also a promising blockchain that uses sharding for uh, fast transactions, very fast and quick transactions and they're evolving. They have a few DeFi projects that are actually blowing up right now. Uh, I don't hear really much about NFTs, but I know that is coming. And it's it's uh, by a great team. So I do like Harmony a lot. Same thing with Helium. They have some good leaders. The founder of Napster uh, you know, was one of the co-founders. They have a lot of traction. They're mining for uh, their, their network mining utilizing uh, antennas. It's actually really, very genius. But they're... They're about creating a mesh network. KuCoin token, of course, is the main token for KuCoin, which a lot of you guys love, and me too. I'm addicted to KuCoin, right? And uh, they have a ton of ton of coins. They're open to the U.S. residents, and they're following footsteps of Binance. They're they're pretty much they have the same features basically. Arweave is a decentralized storage play that I love mostly because, um, you know, they they're partner of a Solana, which I really love. So any kind of storage play on Solana is utilizing Arweave. And Arweave is trying to create a perma web where basically every single article out there, every single article, data, email can be permanently stored on Arweave. That's what they're trying to do. 
And then you have Flow, which is NFT play created by Dapper Labs, creators of CryptoKitties. And they have NBA Top Shots running on top of them, one of the biggest NFT plays out there. And soon, they're going to have UFC as well. And lastly, I want to mention, mention Venus, which is kind of like the maker DAO of Binance Smart Chain. They're a huge lending play. If you want to take out Vi, you basically put down some collateral. You can borrow against your collateral. They give you a stable coin, and you could do what you want with that stable coin. That is what Venus is. But if you look at their volume, it is massive, massive, almost the same. I, I think it's, it's close to maker DAO. So they have uh, come up quite a bit. So that rounds out my list. So I'm going to stop at Venus. Like I said, there's just so many. There's so, so, so many. So I just rounded out at these because I think it's a, it's a good list. So again, do your, own, do your own homework on all of these projects. I think they have a lot of potential, but you may see things otherwise. So make sure you do your homework and, uh, and you decide which ones is right for you. But ultimately, I think 50, 25, 25 is the way to go. And many people that follow it tells me that it works. All right, that is it. Let me get out of here. Let's go back. Well, while I've been talking, Bitcoin is pumping up close to 54,000. So that's pretty good. All right, I'll turn to you guys for some quick q and I just said a lot. I'm losing my voice, so let's make it real quick. All right. Uh, my name is Phil. Much love from One Moon and Moochie Swap family. <laughs> All right. Um, both are on Harmony, right? Uh, what else is there? I think the last one is uh, Barney. Uh, Barmy. May I have your opinion on Hydra? They're offering 180% APY for soft staking. Red flag. That's a little high. I, I've looked at Hydra before, and it seems like their whole page was about, you know, deflationary aspects to to how you're gonna make money with their coin, and that turns me off. You know, I, I didn't really, maybe I missed it. I didn't see any purpose other than there was coin burning, APY. You know, it's deflationary and this and that. So that doesn't uh, doesn't sit well with me. Um, and the lane. I saved this video to share with all my interested friends. Thanks for making it so simple. You're welcome. I figured there's a lot of people that want to know this kind of information, right? I, I know that for some of you guys that's been in this space for a while, you're like, ah, I don't want to hear George build out a portfolio. But there's so many people that's coming in right now that have no clue. I get asked all the time, how do I build a portfolio? Why should I build it this way? What are projects you like? So hopefully that helps. Travis, I, I don't get it. I, I think that's just a lot of fun. People, people keep saying, oh, all these transactions on Binance Smart Chain is fake. Show me how it's fake. Show me how PancakeSwap doesn't have more transactions than all of Ethereum combined, right? There's a ton of people that's on there. So this whole thing about, oh, it's all fake transactions, show me. I think it's just all FUD. It's all FUD. I have not seen any, any proof of that. Not one bit. Um, golden eye, golden eagle. I want to get into buying crypto, but Coinbase doesn't allow, doesn't support small cap. Any other good platforms? Yes, you should look at Binance dot US if you're in the US, and also KuCoin because they do a lot of a lot of these mid small caps that you can't find in Coinbase. So uh, check those out. I have my affiliate links, referral codes in the description. Uh, Mike, appreciate it. All right. I think that's all the super chat. Someone asked, where do you buy? Where do you buy Solana? You can buy it in Binance.us. Um, have you heard of Ramp DeFi? They're accepted uh, in Coinbase custody. I have. I haven't done a deep dive yet. Uh, to be honest, um, I'm set to do uh, a sponsor segment with them. So when I do, I'm going to do a deeper dive and understand more. But at first glance, they look okay. I didn't know they were in Coinbase custody. That... That's probably a good sign. That's probably a good sign. Um, uh, Lance says, thoughts on Cody? I mean, I think they're pretty good. They help companies create uh, payment. Uh, payment. 
uh, like a payment structure, uh, what do you call it? Payment app, I guess. You know, so they, they help companies. They're like a white label solution for that. So I think that's pretty good. They seem to be solid. Uh, love your vi love videos like this, Chelsea. Appreciate it. E1 also appreciate it. See you tonight. Would you do a t tutorial like using things like Uniswap, PancakeSwap? You know, the easiest thing to do is because if you use it from the website, I mean, their website is actually difficult. What I found was easier, and I only found this out recently because I usually don't use DEXs. But download a, a app like a mobile app, um, not mobile app. Download a mobile wallet like Trust Wallet or Coinbase Wallet, and then then and on the bottom you can see apps, and then you could integrate. Uh, Uniswap or pancake swap within and it's very e easy to do and once you do that as long as you have ETH or USDC or whatever in your wallet you can trade very easily and it just stores it there it's really really easy so maybe maybe someday but you just take a look that's the best way to do it centric cash uh, never heard of them what's your roughly what's roughly your total stake in crypto uh, uh, a hundred percent of my net worth <laughs> yeah it's close to a hundred percent it's close to a hundred percent uh i've looked at hathor I, I i don't have any opinions on it cello i don't have any opinions on cello either <laughs> all right uh i think this is this a stable coin i mean uh layer two no that's seller what's cello global payment infrastructure okay this is what cody was um this is what Cody was uh, competing against. Okay. Platform for mobile data or DeFi. A16, Polychain, Coinbase, SV Angel. Those are good backers. You know, honestly, I, I've never really done a deep dive on Celo. And I'm surprised. They're, they're above a billion already. So, um... Binance, Coinbase. Yeah. You know what? They could be good. They could actually be good. You know, I focused on uh, Cody before because they're smaller, but I never focused on Celo, so I, I will in the future. Phantom. Uh, I can't give you a price prediction, but I think they're a good project. They're a good layer two project. Um, ben Key. Yeah, I'm not in the mood to check it out right now. <laughs> To be honest, I'm losing my voice. Tony, okay. Thoughts on Phantom? Yeah, I do like Phantom. As a layer two, I think they're good. They're good. All right, guys. I'm going to let you guys go. I, I said too much in this video. My I'm losing my voice, so I got to preserve my voice for tonight. But look at Bitcoin Go. Look at Bitcoin Go. 54, obviously. Uh, this, is, uh, this is pretty good. You know, I mentioned, you know, like uh, daily daily ta even though i'm not a ta guy but you know you look at a daily rsi bounced up macd coming up stochastic coming up right it looks like it's right on track also with options options expiration the max pain price is actually at fifty four thousand. that's where we are but the most bullish prices are like 70 80 90 can we see a tremendous rally later this week maybe maybe but things are looking pretty good that's why you don't want to believe in a fud right <clears throat> see i'm losing my voice you don't want to believe in a fud believe in the cause believe that things will get better and go higher and uh and as it has worked for the last 10 years especially with bitcoin so you dollar cost average you buy when others are fearful you buy the dips and you hold all that's pretty much it all right solana announcement will distract the cardano announcement maybe i know they have a big announcement i don't know what it is i i hope it's bit i hope it's good uh, each swap is a taxable event. Yes, that is true. That is true. Or unless you sign up with iTrust Capital and you play with your uh, IRA and or Roth IRA, and that is not taxable until you actually withdraw. Um, but yeah, consult your tax advisor on that. <laughs> Imperial News, uh, thank you for that. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see you guys tonight, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right, take care.